Hello everyone and welcome to Robotics, Control Engineering, Mechatronics and Machine Learning Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of Robotics, Mechatronics and Control Engineering. This particular tutorial is dedicated to the introduction to ROS and Turtle Sim Simulator. And over here you can see the Turtle Sim Simulator. For those of you who are not familiar with ROS, ROS stands for Robot Operating System. And ROS is a widely used tool by people from industry, researcher and students. It's a very powerful operating system for controlling or even simulating robotic systems. On the other hand, Turtle Sim is a simple application that is designed for learning the basic concepts of ROS. It demonstrates the basic principles of ROS and gives you an overview of how ROS is used in real-life robotic systems. What you can see over here is a turtle and I'm moving this turtle by pressing the keys on my keyboard. In this tutorial, I will teach you the basics of ROS and how to generate this simulation and I will explain you all the concepts that are necessary to understand in order to start with ROS. But before I start, I would like to mention a few things. First of all, those of you who are my subscribers or who follow this channel know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this tutorial. And consequently, here is the post. This post contains all the graphs, Linux command line tools, codes, and figures. A link to this post is given in the description below. Secondly, it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this post and this video tutorial. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Before we explain how to use ROS on a Turtle Sim simulator, it is first important to introduce and explain the basic ROS terminology, such that you can fully understand all the implementation steps presented later on in this tutorial. This is a block diagram that summarizes the main working principle of the ROS communication system. Let us first explain nodes. According to the ROS documentation, nodes are processes that, are, that perform computations. They are able to communicate with other nodes by using topics services and parameter server. In this tutorial, I will only focus on topics. Over here, you can see the first node and you can see the second node. And the first node is sending some message through topic to node two. In practice and in real life robotic systems, node can be, for example, a process or a program that controls a laser range finder or a distance sensor. For example, this can be a distance sensor on your robot and this distance sensor has a program and this program is called node. This program actually controls the distance sensor, receives the information, processes this information, and it sends this information further to other systems. For example, in this configuration, node 2 can be, for example, a servo controller that receives distance sensor measurements and uses this information and a PAD controller to control a servo motor. Then, nodes can also be uh, programs uh, that implement an algorithm or algorithms for path planning or obstacle avoidance. Then, nodes can be programs receiving information from camera. Other programs are, can also be implemented as nodes or some other hardware components. Next, let us explain topics. According to the ROS documentation, topics are named buses that are used to exchange messages between nodes. Loosely speaking, 
Topics can be seen as channels that are used to send receive information in form of messages that can be, for example, strings, floats, or some other data structures. Topics have names that describe the type and purpose of a message being sent. A publisher node, for example, this node is a publisher node, sends a message through a topic. This is very important to understand. For example, in the case of a node reading the information from a distant sensor and the node controlling the servo motor, the node responsible for the distant sensor is the publisher node. And the node controlling the servo motor is the subscriber node. This is very important to keep in mind. The topic name can be, for example, distance sensor information. The messages are a series of floats describing the distance of the robot to an obstacle. In the most general case, the publisher and subscriber nodes are not aware of each other. This is very important also to keep in mind. That is, topics implement anonymous way of communicating between nodes. To repeat, a topic is a message bus or channel and any node can connect to this bus to send receive information. Next, let us explain the ROS master that you can see over here. According to the ROS documentation, the ROS master enables naming and registration services to all the nodes in the ROS system. It keeps a track of publishers and subscribers to certain topics and services. That is, it ensures that nodes are properly connected to the appropriate topics. For example, the node responsible for the distance sensor has to tell to the ROS master that it wants to publish sensor information to the topic distance sensor information. It can send the sensor information to that topic. However, on the other end, initially there is no subscriber to this topic, so information will not be sent. Then, the node responsible for the servo motor has to tell to the ROS master that it wants to subscribe to the topic distance sensor information. After both publisher and subscriber nodes are registered by the ROS master to desired topic, the communication can start. Okay, let's start with the Turtle Sim simulator. We need to perform several steps in order to initialize the Turtle Sim simulator. First of all, we need to start a terminal window. Here is our terminal window. The first step is to initialize our ROS master. We do that by typing in the terminal ROS core. This command will bring the master. Now the master is active and here's the output. You can see that I'm using the ROS distribution Noetic and here's my ROS version. If you use all the ROS versions, this tutorial might not be applicable. However, this is the relatively recent ROS distribution Noetic and I'm not using ROS2. So keep in mind these facts. The next step is to run the turtle sim node. We can do that by opening a new terminal. So keep in mind this, you always need to open a new terminal in order to start the node. Because you will see over here that this current terminal is not active anymore. Actually, it is active, however, you cannot type. That is, the command line is not active. So we are having some form of multi-threading over here. I will click over here on this window or basically on this icon in order to open a new command line. However, you can open a new terminal. So let's type in this terminal ROS run. This is a command called ROS run. Keep in mind that the name of the node is, or actually the name of the package is turtle sim and 
the name of the node is turtle sim underscore node. Let's press enter. Let's see what will happen. Aha! Uh -huh. Here is our simulation window. And we can see a few messages over here. We can see that the turtle is created at this position x, y, and theta. And theta is basically the angle of rotation. And x and y are the coordinates measured from either this corner, this corner, this corner, or this corner. This is not relevant. Now, let us try to move this turtle in this window. I will click over here and I will press the arrows on my keyboard and I can see that nothing, nothing is happening. I will also press over here and nothing is happening. So what's the catch over here? Well, in order to move our turtle, we need to open and create another node. That is, we need to create another terminal window. And in this terminal window, we will type ROS run turtle sim. And the name of the node is turtle teleop underscore key. And let's press enter. Aha, uh -huh. let's see the message. It's written, reading from keyboard. Use arrow keys to move the turtle or Q to quit. So let's see what happens over here. Let's bring back the simulation window. Keep this simulation window somewhere here and click over here. Now you can press the arrow keys and you can see that the turtle is actually moving. If I press up, I go in this direction. If I press down, I go in the opposite direction. If I press left, I rotate my turtle clockwise. If I press left, I do in the opposite direction. Okay, so this is how we move the turtle. Now, notice something over here. Let's go back to this terminal and let's try to move the turtle. Mm, nothing happens. How about here? Nothing happens. So you have to be in this terminal window in order to be able to move our turtle. Okay, so we know how to move the turtle and this can be a nice computer game, but however, this is a serious tutorial. We want to understand what is actually happening behind the scenes. So what is actually happening here? To see what is happening behind the scenes, I will open a new terminal. And then in this terminal, I will type cross node list. And this command will be used to list all the ROS nodes currently running on our system. Aha! Uh -huh. So I have one, two, three nodes currently running. This first node, ROS out, is the node that is actually console log reporting mechanism in ROS. It's not important for this tutorial. The second node is very important. This is the node used to listen the pressed keyboard keys and to interpret them and send the appropriate control actions to the turtle sim node. We created this node over here when we wrote rostran turtle sim turtle tele teleop key. Teleop turtle and turtle sim nodes are communicating with each other over an appropriate topic that will be revealed later on. More precisely, Teleop turtle is publishing entered keyboard keys on a specific topic and the turtle sim subscribes to that topic in order to receive the entered keys. And finally, we have our turtle sim node is the node that is actual turtle that moves on this simulation screen. And this is very important to keep in mind. We can reveal more information about the particular node by typing gross node info and by specifying the node that we are interested in. Let's figure out what is this node actually doing behind the scene. 
Okay, so let's analyze the output. The node name is turtle sim. We can actually see that this node publishes something to these topics. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. More about these topics in our future tutorials. And this is very important. It subscribes to this topic. Turtle 1, command velocity. Mm -hmm. So this is the subscription of this node. And this node through this topic receives information from Teleop Turtle. So let's see what the Teleop Turtle is actually doing. And let's just specify the name. It should be Teleop Turtle. Aha! Uh -huh. We can see that this node publishes to Rossout, not important. Aha! Uh -huh. And over here we can see that it actually publishes messages to this topic, Turtle 1 command velocity. And this is what we expected because the other node the turtle sim node is actually subscribed to the same topic. So going back to our diagram that you can see over here, or let me bring the appropriate window that you can see over here, this node 1 in our case is actually teleop turtle node and this node is actually turtle sim and the topic name is command velocity. This is very important to keep in mind. Next, let us generate a dynamic graph that will further reveal what is happening behind the scenes. Let us open a new terminal by clicking over here and let's type ROS run RQT underscore graph and let's repeat RQT underscore graph and let's see what happens I'm pressing enter and here it is this is a very useful tool for visualizing the connections between the nodes we can see that we have the node called teleop turtle that publishes information through this topic turtle one command velocity and turtle sim receives this information so you can reveal everything about your raw system by simply typing this command and this command is very useful next let us see a complete list of topics again I'm opening a new terminal and in this terminal I will type ROS topic list and this parameter will mean verbose and let's see what happens uh -huh. I have published topics and here they are and I have subscribed topics here's our important topic for communication this topic is being used to publish and to subscribe perfect next let us investigate the messages that are sent through this topic let's do that let's type ROS type and then let's do or actually let's do this ROS topic type and let's specify this topic turtle 1 command velocity and let's see what happens aha uh -huh. I see here that the message is of a type geometry messages twist hmm very interesting let us further reveal what's actually this message so i will type ross message show geometry messages and then i will type twist let's see what happens aha uh -huh, i obtain something like this this means that the message consists of six float variables and according to the ROS documentation, this data structure actually specifies a velocity vector in free space with linear and angular components. And I will talk more about this in my future tutorials. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. 
Thank you very much and have a nice day.